Psalm 125 verse 3 says, For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. We read that the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. The fist of the wicked shall not remain or abide. The psalmist is making reference to the promised land that God provided for the Israelites. The allotment or portion was to be the inheritance of the Israelites. And this land was a major part of the covenant that God made with Abraham and the ensuing 12 tribes of Israel. Genesis to Deuteronomy is a journey to the promised land. Joshua is the taking of the promised land. Judges is the defending and losing portions of the promised land. And Ruth is all about the inheritance of the land. The whole Old Testament has at its core the people of God and the land of God. And either the people resting in the land, getting run out of the land, or returning to the land. But what is strange is that when we get into the New Testament, there doesn't seem like there's a much concern with the land. The reason for this is that in the Old Testament, we are dealing with a lot of symbols, but the New Testament deals with realities. In the Old Testament, the land represented what was to come eternally for the people of God, which is rest, fruitfulness, abundance. In the New Testament, that is found in the new heavens and the new earth, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven to the new earth, all with King Jesus reigning over it. We even read in Hebrews 11 that the Old Testament saints desired a better country, a heavenly one. What does any of this have to do with the text that we read? How does this apply? Well, what God is telling us through this text is that our inheritance in Christ is kept safe from the wicked no matter what happens on this earth. The reign of the wicked one is on a predetermined leash. He can't go any further out than what the Lord allows. And we can spend a lot of time worrying about the direction of our world, our culture, our country, but we must remember that all of it is temporary. And the enemy will not extend any further or any more intense than what the Lord allows so as not to jeopardize our inheritance in heaven. It may have looked like Satan's wishes were coming true when Christ was dying on the cross, but it was really serving God's purposes of redemption. The rejoicing of the devil, the rejoicing of the wicked was short-lived, only three days, and then they had real trouble on their hands. A resurrected Savior, a death defeater, and Satan stomper, a sin crusher, so that the reign of wickedness could not endure. Jesus himself said in Luke 22 when he was arrested to those who came to arrest him, This is your hour and the power of darkness. It's limited. It's restricted by the sovereign hand of God to serve the saving and glorifying purposes of God. Our inheritance, though it looked like there would be none once Jesus was in the grave, our inheritance was triumph over his foes. A new king sits on the throne of David, a righteous scepter, a more powerful fist. Therefore, we can respond to God's word in the highest of confidence. We go into the world not wondering if we're on the winning side, but knowing it, our inheritance is secured from the wicked. When you pray today, please remember Jimmy Walker and his family, our missionaries in the Philippines. And also remember the Maasai broadcast that's heard in Kenya and Tanzania.